welcome to So You Want to Be a Real Estate Agent. Are you evaluating your career in real estate? Feel like you're ready for a fresh start or ready to take your career to the next level? This is your podcast. Welcome back to So You Want to Be a Real Estate Agent. I am Meredith Fogel along with my co-host, Alicia Zoikawa. Hi, Alicia. Hey, hey, I'm here. All right. So this is a very interesting topic and one that I get asked all the time about as a coach. And we have a little bit of an expert on this topic with us today. Our topic is how to get discovered on YouTube. For those who know YouTube, you know that it is an avenue to success in any kind of, I think, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, can I talk, industry. Um, and it's becoming, I think, more and more crucial to not only visibility, but becoming like a lead generator and also a really cool tool to get discovered by people who might not know you otherwise. So I'm super interested to hear what Alicia has to say, because Alicia has not only been studying, she's taken a course on YouTube strategies, but she's building her own YouTube presence. Um, so first of all, Alicia, let's start. We usually end with this, but let's start with, we want people to go in, follow you, watch your content so they can understand what you're doing. And I think as they watch, they're going to see how what we're about to talk about is reflected in your content. So that's kind of why I want to start with follow you first. So where can they find you on YouTube? So on YouTube, if you would I just search my name, Alicia Zoe Kawa, um, it should come up. It's the art of transformation. It's Alicia Zoe Kawa thriving in real estate and life. And one of the things that you have to do is I had a different YouTube attached to my real estate business and it was the collaborative and it was very mixed and jumbled. I just threw walkthrough videos. I was like, everybody follow me. And so what it was doing is just confusing the algorithm, meaning like if you go and type something in like a search, it's confusing it when it has all random people following it from my mom to all these people that had nothing to do with who I wanted to see the channel. And because I just wanted number of subscribers. Okay. Right. And so that's a, that's one thing you have to remember. It's like on short form, like your Instagram and TikTok, if you, and Facebook, if you pay people to follow you and they're bots doing it and they're from all different countries and you could have a million followers, it may be followers that have nothing to do with your marketplace or who you're trying to attract. So the right people are not viewing your content and consuming it. And if it's happening, then you're not converting for it to actually being a money maker for you. So, okay. so let me ask you. Let me stop you for one second because I want to I want to break that down for a second. Um, so what I heard you say was first of all we know paying for like bot followers that's never a good practice. And I heard you say like people that are just random like family members like your mom if they don't fall into the audience that you're trying to reach mm -hmm. that also will detract from your ability to. It will. Okay. Because SEO. Like think about it. Like if you're making content that's not for children, you need to market not for children. Right. Because you don't want it being showed to kids because they have nothing right. to do with what you want. Right. So the same thing. So if you have content and you have a teenage daughter and all your content's about buying houses, but then it's sending it to your teenage daughter, it's going to send it to other teenage daughters who have nothing mm -hmm. to do with your house. Does that make sense? Because okay. it knows who you are when you're creating it, your profile. It knows who you are. Okay. So that leads me to a very rookie question, which you just touched on is that little checkbox that says made for children, made for kids, not made for kids. Is So if you're checking made for kids, it's supposed to be like, in my mind, does that mean it is in, your intentional audience is only children? Correct. Or does it mean there are no expletives? I think it's made for children. Okay. Like, so it's like in the kids section. Got it. Okay. Like even Netflix has like the kids section, right? Like, I, yeah, yeah. like think about the kids section at the library. You're not okay. Going to Got it. All right. So that makes sense to me. Okay. So what happens if you do have, you said it confuses the algorithm. What happens if you have already like your channel, like you were saying is already kind of like mixed up with a whole bunch of different people, or you've made the mistake of paying for fake followers or bots to follow your account. Do you start from scratch or what do yeah. you do? You do. Okay. I, I, from what I've seen and heard, you can try to rework your old page Mm -hmm. come back and do it. But if your old page is like complete different content mm -hmm. and you're starting over again, it will, the other people will be lost by attrition and you can kind of work the C SEO. But if you're starting a whole new topic, so like my new page is specifically about thriving in life and real estate, but it's not just 
for houses and for listings and buyers. My site is more specifically geared towards business women, women, it's women, number one, is who I'm geared towards, or people that want to learn about women, meaning like men that are trying to understand their wives or girlfriends <laughs> or sisters, that might be interesting to them or their daughters, right? Where are we going? What are we going through so they can support that person? Good idea, men, just saying. Yeah, well, like I just sense so that would make sense for them to follow, but it's really like I figured out my avatar and 75% of my population in Facebook, we realize in research is women. Mm, okay. And so if that's who follows me naturally, that's who resonates with me, who lands with me, mm -hmm. it's attracting to me. So I feel more comfortable having conversations, telling about that and giving advice on that and what that journey has been like for me, because I've gone through a lot of things and I feel like I have things to offer from all different ages, but specifically like mid twenties until like your fifties, that whole piece where how do I work? How do I become a good mom? If I want to become a mo good mom, how do I not lose myself? How do I get myself back? How do I, you know, how do I kick tear myself? How do I grow a business and not lose my femininity? How do I, you know, all the different things I think that women face is in business and working for themselves. How do I take the risk to even leave my job to do this? Like mm -hmm. it can okay. be real estate, it could be insurance, it could be whatever it is. It just for my me, the avenue was real estate. So that's okay. the intent of the of the site, if that makes sense. It does. Okay. So I'm trying to like, think about this in a, in like a step-by-step -step kind of a, a manner. So is step one is if you've already got a YouTube channel and it's mm -hmm. a mishmash of different things, scrap, start a new channel. That's or step. figure out what your topic is on that channel. Okay. Aim it to that topic that's specific to what you're addressing. So okay. remember like when Tom said like the universe or the, you will be rewarded for the specific and punished for the vague. Oh yeah. The universe rewards the specific mm -hmm. and punishes the vague. Yes. Yes. So, so it's same. like, I want to go North. Okay. Well, that's New York. That's me. It's Canada. Where are we going? It's Maryland for me. Like, am I going to see Meredith or am I going to visit family in New York? Like, you know, it's like this whole, I want to do YouTube. Okay. What are we doing? YouTube? Is it consumer? Is it agent to agent? Is it yeah. to get sellers? Is it to get buyers? What is it for? So that's something that you have to have that honest question. So, cause I have a lot of agents that do have very high performing YouTube channels too, that I coach and they're complaining that all they get is buyers. And I'm like, well, your YouTube channel is geared towards relocation, moving into the city. Mm -hmm. Of course you're going to get buyers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So you got to define what you, what you want as the outcome. It sounds like maybe that's really step one. So step yeah, one, what do you want? Like, do you want, yeah, who is your audience? Who are we talking to? But what is it even more about? like, what's the purpose of this? Because that's another question I have. Sometimes when coaching clients come to me and say, I want to use a YouTube strategy, I say, what's the outcome you're, you want to achieve? Is that the right question to ask? Yeah. What are, what are you trying to gain from the, the YouTube? Are you trying to get brand awareness? Okay. Are you trying to get people to know, like, and trust you? Mm. Are you trying to be the local guide of your area? Are you trying to get sellers? Are you trying to get buyers? Are you trying to work with a specific price point? Are you, does that make sense? So like, even I have a client that was like, I had this site living in Colorado. I was like, girl, that's too, that's too general. Hmm. You need to be in the city, even hyper market. Like you service Kentlands. I know that from all your content. Hmm. I actually know that. You do know that. That's good. Thank you. So you should be living in Kentlands. Does that make sense? Not living in Maryland. Right. So it's like too big of a pond. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's too big and people are like, well, they may follow you, but if they know they're moving to Kentlands or they research, that's what I want to be, you'll get them a hundred percent versus okay. getting kind of like a shot in the dark. Okay. So you want to be very specific to the audience. You want to know the direction you're going in. You want to know what the outcome you're trying to achieve is. Does it matter what you name your YouTube channel? Um, It does because it's part of the SEO strategy. Okay. So okay. think of like anything that's written mm -hmm. is searchable. Yep. So your title is searchable. Okay. And YouTube so, is, is owned by Google. So we know correct. it's there's a search engine, which is more like a, you think of it as like a how to kind of search engine. So when you got, okay, you have your channel. Well, just let me, let me ask you this. What was your outcome that you were trying to achieve when you started this YouTube channel with a more intentional my uh, outcome is to have a channel where I can reach not buyers and sellers, 
but I do have a, in my about section, have a inquiry about working with me if you want to work okay. with me. It's going to happen, right? It yeah. just happens. It's more, it was, for me, it's more in a place of, because I am in a situation with Tom Ferry, like I have a link for my coaching piece there. Okay. Um, and it was really to reach and have a space to share um, education and advice and mentorship and inspiration on just coaching and life and just sharing. Cause I find that a lot of people ask me lots of questions just like you. And it's a place where I've kind of made it mandatory now for all my coaching clients to subscribe because there's other content on there that they may get and resonate that I'm not going to go over on 30 minute call that mm -hmm. are different topics. So I just did my three topics. I filmed um, the other night I was telling you was imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, how do you deal with that? Uh, one was the mom guilt. Mm -hmm. And, um, the last one was my journey from, I never really have talked about it in detail about what, how I got into real estate and uh -huh. leaving corporate to become an agent and what that looked like for me and what the journey came. Cause this is my 10th year in the business. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of cool because in 10 years, what has happened is just mind blowing compared to, I never would have imagined this place I'd be at. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So documenting the journey for you in an attempt to connect with people who are also like on a similar journey and kind of want to know, know more about it. And then as a, a, a natural organic side effect, you're going to get people who want to work with you either as a client or as a coaching client, perhaps. Right. Is that right? Yeah. Either coaching or, and the cool thing with um, YouTube, you have to remember is that you don't need millions of followers. I think there's this like misnomer that if you aren't getting millions of followers or hundreds and hundreds of that, your can't channel doesn't count. And, oh, I only get like a hundred views. I'm like, do you know what a hundred people in a room look like? Mm, yeah, that's true. Good point. Like, yeah. seriously? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even if you get like one view, it's better than nothing. Like, and it, yeah. it allows people to see you for who you are if you allow it. So I think if you show up in the right way and you show up like, this is who I am in all areas of my life. So you can monetize, not, you can monetize by getting a client in real life, right? You can monetize by um, having affiliate links within your place. Cause if they're going to go that way anyways, and you're talking about stuff like products that you use, like calendars that you use and da, 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 and this work for me and someone gets it cause of you, mm -hmm. well, you get the affiliate money. Okay. Right? okay. There's another way to make money. Okay. The third way to make money is have an Amazon store attached okay. to your site. Then when you hit a thousand subscribers or if it's a thousand subscriber or 4,000 hours view total, you mm -hmm. get monetization partnership where you can People get will reach out to you. People, you get paid for YouTube. You get paid directly from YouTube. How does for that work? For hours and 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 in in video ads. Oh, I see. So they're placing ads for you, and you're getting some kind of a monetized mm -hmm. subsidy from people watching those ads. Interesting. Okay, so in your your mind, you've got this your your avatar, your audience avatar figured out. You have your content avatar figured out. Correct. And you have taken it. I think I can say this on here. It was Think Media. Is that right that you took the course through? Yeah. So it's through Think Media, and then I also so I did two different things. I did a challenge because something came up. I don't know what came up, and I was like, I'll do it. I was like. It was July 4th weekend. And I was like, I had this time. I'll just do it. So I pounded through this crazy five-day challenge. And I did it. I filled all the paperwork out. And at the end, it was like, if you want to sign up for a video ranking academy through us, this is an actual module. And I haven't gone through all of it. I, but the biggest mistake I think you can make is to think you need to take every single course before you start. Mm, You're supposed yeah. to do it as you go. Okay. Interesting. Because I, yeah. I, could, I found myself not doing it. And I was like, I got to just do this. So that's why I was like, screw it. So then I started <laughs> and they give you like a model of how do you block your time out to do this, but you definitely need to block the time out. And I have, I have a Google sheet where I have like all my topics and then I linked in vidIQ. So you can use vidIQ or YouTube, YouTube buddy to help you with SEO. Um, mm -hmm. I have a video editor that helps me make um, thumbnails. And so that stuff I'm not doing on my own. So I try to leverage the places that I need to leverage that don't make sense. But I shoot my own content because I have a camera and I just set it up because okay. all my content is like this. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not really me moving and having to, mm -hmm. that's not the channel I'm building, you know? Okay. 
Okay. All right. So I want to break that what, down what you just said, because I'm thinking about the, the audience member who's listening or watching right now and going, wait a minute, I heard her say vid, vid IQ. Mm-hmm. I heard her say TubeBuddy. I heard her say, mm-hmm. I have somebody who's creating my thumbnails, doing my mm-hmm. editing for me. The average person is probably like their head spinning right now thinking, what mm-hmm. the heck is all this stuff? So how important is it? And I also heard you say at the same time, don't do like the analysis paralysis thing. Don't overeducate yourself and not actually act because we know action is what you need to get into if you're going to do something like this. So yeah. as you were going, did you already know about TubeBuddy, vidIQ? Did you already have somebody to create thumbnails for you? Or did you layer these things on as you went? Um, I layered them at, well, as I went, because what happened is I didn't think I needed vidIQ or TubeBuddy until I was like trying to figure out my stats. Okay. And, t- and tell okay. people what, what is vid, vid IQ and what is TubeBuddy? I, TubeBuddy is also very similar. And whoever, like, I know when this is published in the video section, you can probably have like little, she can search it and put it up hopefully mm-hmm. in the screen. Um, but it's like a portal that you integrate with your YouTube channel and it runs stats for you. It shows you how many views you had. It gives you like little fun badges, kind of like the Peloton app. Where, like, you this want- TubeBuddy that we're talking about? Um, that's vidIQ. I don't vidIQ, use TubeBuddy, okay. but TubeBuddy uh, was the original, and then they just got bought out recently. So there's a little controversy about them. Apparently, I'm not getting involved in that. So I'm part of this whole accountability group on Facebook that came with the course I'm taking, which is another helpful thing because you need people around you. They're like, "You're doing great," because you think that you're not. Um, and it's so cool to see people post that says like, you know. I can't believe I'm doing it. And since I did it, I grew my viewership by 10,000. Like, it's pretty incredible what people are growing. Yeah. They're growing every topic you can imagine. Like, yeah. he brings on a lady that does videos on apple cider vinegar, making it, making okay. the mother of apple cider vinegar. I didn't know that was a thing. And this other lady, and they're both in their 60s or something. And they didn't even know how to turn a computer on, basically a camera. Yeah. And so if they can do it. I think they bring them on because it's like saying, like, if they can do it, like, come on. Right. And also to your point, you can find an audience. Like if you go focused enough with your content, which that's pretty darn focused content. It's it's better. It's better to go focused. That's why I say like, I already know mine is women, particularly women in real estate. A lot of times it's second careers Mm -hmm. or it's after the kids are there or they jumped into it after doing something. And then it's not your typical first career. Mm-hmm. So it's a great, a lot of moms do it after like, or their, you know, their kids go to school, whatever's going on. Like I, that's what I tend to see. Mm-hmm. And the ones that are doing it right out of school, they may, I may be like the auntie that they didn't have that I can advise them other, other things, but I may not be for them either. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? So I'm not with that. I don't have to get everybody. I just need to get the people that I resonate with. Okay. And when you're planning, like brainstorming content ideas, I can see how, you're probably filtering your content through the lens of, is this going to resonate, as you said, with these people? Uh, So if it's like, you know, I don't know what, if it's how to be the top producing team in real estate, maybe that's not the content for that particular audience. But if it's something like how to, you know, balance being a, a mom and getting kids to where they need to go with building your budding real estate career, totally within that that wheelhouse. So that helps you select content. Now, the other thing I know about what you've done, and this is what I was saying at the beginning to follow you because you'll see it as you watch your content is how to organize your topics. So you go, you've transitioned from being more like kind of a conversational stream of consciousness, content creation to being very thought out and planned about the way that you do that. So talk to us about what that looks like, how you yeah. execute, on staying on topic and how that um, informs your editing process. So basically the most of the work is done before the camera goes, starts shooting. Mm. So I literally go like, so I'll brain dump topics on like, it's this long list of all like, that's an interesting. Um, and then I actually ask questions to people. Like I put posted in the wire forum, which is all women who, what's your biggest pain point in the business? What did you guys have you dealt with? Like, because the whole thing is that business is solving problems. Mm, yep. That's all it is. Every business. So YouTube is a business and I'm trying to solve problems. So I don't, can't solve what I don't know what the problem is. Mm-hmm. So that's why I ask, like, what are the pain points? What okay. are the things you guys are going through? And so that's the hook. So I paint, then I figure out what is the problem. And then I actually go, all right, if I'm going to shoot this video, then 
I need to think about what is the hook. So I follow the story brand, like the, what's the problem? What is the issue? Mm-hmm. What is the solution? And what was the results? Is okay, there so give us an example of problem, issue, solution, results. So okay. for the imposter ones, I actually like write it out like a script or mm-hmm. I'll write it out like on um, a YouTube, but it's not a script that I read from. It's just I do topics. So I remember to stay. I remember bring this up, bring this up, bring this up. So let's just give you an example. I filmed just a couple of nights ago um, about the imposter syndrome mos- monster is what I call it. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the, the problem was, do you feel, do you struggle feeling you don't measure up deep inside? Mm, that's a good one. Right. You may project, you feel confident and no, but deep inside lays the imposter syndrome monster. Like a, a scary bedtime story. Right. Sure. So here are my top three takeaways when I battle this myself. Hmm. Right. So then I say, I, number one, I see myself as the identity of what I'm working on. And then I put in there, Ryan Sarhant did this. Remember, he was not selling anything when he interviewed. Right. And it talked about that. That, that's, that was a fascinating proof, credibility, right? Think mm-hmm. about credibility. Yeah. Two is at coaching, all that stuff. When I was in coaching, like I had to see myself already as the coach. Mm-hmm. and not worry. Cause the thing about when I was a coaching client and I became a coach, there was that piece of, and I know you went through this as well, of my peers are going to think I'm a joke. Right. Right. Like, oh my God, I feel so embarrassed. They're going to, who am I to be coaching? That's what right. it is. Okay. Right. Right. Um, two is surround yourself, um, your circle with amazing sur- humans that will push you. If people are doing better than you, they will never put you down. Mm, so true. Yes. Yes. Everyone that puts you down or has judgment or either competing with you in some sort, or they're lower than you. Yeah. Cause they're trying to pull you down side, or they're on the sideline. They're not, even, they have no skin in the game. They're just like a yeah. side. Picture. Oh, so, so true. Yeah. Um, and three would be celebrate your wins, like the small wins, awareness for the gratitude and great grace in your life, because I think you're not even allowing yourself to see how far you've come. So that's why you feel that way. Yeah. And why have you made it that far? Because you took risks, you took chance, you went on it, you went for it. Mm-hmm. That was the last piece. So you have to allow all these things to happen. So that's the three things I do when I start cre- feeling it creep because mm. I'm in a transition now. Right. And so it's very easy that that could be like, oh my God, this is, did I make the right decision? And, you know, questioning all the things that you're doing. And so then it puts doubt. And when you have doubt and there's uncertainty, it it kind of oozes out around you too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so true what you say. And um, it's so helpful for people to see this too. So definitely watch that episode. I'm going to watch that episode. That, that seems like a good one um, for right now. And I think the fact that it is, if you're listening to this and you're struggling with that mindset challenge mm-hmm. as a YouTube creator, realize that there's a community around you of people who are going to lift you up, who are successful. And anybody who's trying to detract from you is trying to pull you down to a level that you're above anyway. So kind of just block out that noise. Beautiful. Oh. Right, so you've got, you've got the talking points. You do, do like a storyboard kind of with the talking points. You've got a great storyboard. Point. That's the word. Yes. You have to storyboard everything. Every- what if you can't figure out, I know people struggle with that hook piece of it. Is there, would you use like a chat GPT or a Tom AI absolutely. if you're an easy to client? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Use chat GPT. You could even ask a questions like what are the top things that are issues? Um, VidIQ actually has great ideas. I get a lot of my topics from them because they'll tell you what, what's ranking high in questions. Ah, okay. That's beautiful. All right. So you have an idea of what like a hot topic might be to address. So you've storyboarded it. Now, now you do, you, you film your content. Mm-hmm. And then you talked about creation of thumbnails. One thing I want to ask you about that I've noticed is you have these cool little pop-up. I don't even know what they're called, like graphics that happen with a little sound effect during your video. How mm-hmm. does that happen? So that's from the editors that are doing it. Okay. So I have a company that does my videos and my, my, um, they'll give me a couple different graphics YouTube thumbnails and I'll test them. I'll put one up and I'll see if it does anything. And I'll put another one up if I don't see it doing anything. What do you mean by doing anything? Like if I don't see it gaining traction on followers. I mean, okay. I mean like so how long them. do you test it before you switch it up? Um, typically I, I do it within a week or so. And just to see, cause you should see like it should come pretty quickly, but also if it ranks low. So like the VidIQ will rank you on SEO based on all everything you do. Oh, how interesting. All right. Yeah. And if I'll you're your own editor, when we're not, because this is not like, I can't screen share anything right now, but oh, right. So if, if you're your own editor, 
How are you finding, what, what would you recommend in terms of finding a way to insert those, those sound oh, effects? Cap, I think okay. CapCut can do it. Okay. Um, and you can do automatic c- captions with CapCut. CapCut right. is a cool program. I really like CapCut a lot. And mm-hmm. ha- you, you can, I use CapCut myself for all my short form videos that I do myself on my, my phone. Okay. So all my transitions. And so if you just play around with it, I'm like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like when I think about my very first video that I ever did, I look like someone shocked me, like literally <laughs> stunned me. And I was like, hello, this is one, two, three. And I was like, <laughs> I think I watched it. I was like, what is wrong with me? They're actually really funny. Like, and I think Tom has shown that at some of our events, like their first yeah. video hysterical. It's actually really fun to watch funny videos like that. I think it, it I is know. funny. It is funny. Yeah. I didn't see what, what the growth is. So you you test it, you put it on. What should people expect? Their very first, either they're, they're refurbishing or whatever the word is, they're re-energizing their original YouTube channel, or they've scrapped the old one and they're starting with a new one. That first video comes on. And if it's me, I'm like, okay, here it is world. I put the video out there. And I'm like, where are my followers? Where are my views? What, what do you do in that situation? Um, you have to give it time. I think the biggest thing I learned from the challenge is that it just takes time. Like it's time and consistency. Certain channels will, you, you may have a viral video for whatever reason that just takes off and no one knows why. And you'll get a bunch of subscribers. But if your content is not consistent with what, why they followed that, like, I don't know if you've ever seen that. You see a video and you're like, I love it. And you try to follow them and they don't ever make a video again about that topic. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, I'm out. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. you need to know about like, what does your audience want to see? And you yeah. need to be consistent. Like you can't just post one video and put it in the universe and think that you're going to get a million followers. Like, and I think I heard you say that. too, if, if you have one that does well, double down on it, right? Like don't yeah. abandon mm-hmm. that topic. No. And I think also you have to be realistic too. So if you give up something viral on, on um, TikTok or Instagram, it's because you've done something trending or you did something ridiculous that made it come. And those are not necessarily the people that you're going to want watching your channel. So again, just because it's the numbers, does not mean it's the quality? Okay. All right. Like if you're doing a funny dance or you're, you're like, let's say, say you fall down and 10 million people fall up, like your thing and laugh and think it's a stick yeah. that you fall down. Is that really what you want your content to be? Yeah. Is every video going to be falling down people? It could be. And you'll probably make a lot of money, but that's not who you want to be. But right. you went viral on that one video. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you can't, I think it's a that's I think I got that question at Summit too. It's like you can't take a viral video and duplicate it unless it's the viral video based on the content you're wanting to present. That's okay. why knowing what you want to present and who you're trying to attract is so important. You got to start with the end. Yes. Yes. You did get that question. Well, let me ask you about like the product placement part of it. Cause this is another place where I could see people going wrong. Perhaps it's like, you know, everything that you're starting to like a hawk on your, your channel. Yeah. Like it, this, like you lose your, right. Exactly. Like as I'm drinking, Avian, what is that even water? What is that? I don't know. I, don't know. I, I have not oh, white sitting here. I got this because I thought it was fancy. It's one of those facial sprays. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sure you're a placement. Like, product placement. So but, but what about like, how do you stay authentic and still work that monetization in? I think it just happens naturally. So monetization. Um, so if I'm talking about books, mm. I read constantly, you know, we read in our group. Yeah. And I'm constantly, I have like 25 books sitting around me and I have books all, and I read and I genuinely read and I, it has changed my life. And if I'm referencing a book or talking about a book and they're going to go buy the book, why shouldn't I get credit for that book? So maybe saying something like, and if you go buy this, like uh, Davidson, send it to my Amazon store and buy it. Right. And it'll benefit this, this channel or it'll benefit my, yeah. That's how I get paid. It's I'm not hiding right. it. Just like sign right. up for coaching. My affiliate link is there. If you go through me, then I get credit for you signing up instead of a salesperson that's doing out. I think home. that's like, the way to be very yeah. transparent about it. Right. It up says front. that my affiliate links. Yeah. And I'm like, check my page. If you want to know, like even think media, like I have an affiliate link with that. If you sign up, then I get a little bit for the class, but I'm doing the class. I paid for the class. I'm doing it. I'm living it. Like yeah. why shouldn't I benefit if someone else jumps on and does all the work too? I agree. And I think what looks suspect is when, like, if you held up that Avion thing and it's just like, oh, I'm taking a, let me oh. spray this on my face. Then that looks yeah. cheesy. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me ask you this now. How do you get to begin with people to start following or subscribing to your channel? Are you like 
asking Facebook friends? Are you re republishing it on Facebook? What are you? Are I share. You I share it on my channel. Absolutely, I share it on my LinkedIn. I share it on my Facebook. I share it in our group. I share it with people that I, I value their opinion. Can you watch this and let me know what you think? Can you share it? Um, share it with people that it may affect because it grows. It's a word of mouth. Things grow by word of mouth. Like think about a lot of times I've shared. Um, it's like wildfire can grow that way sometimes, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. think about like women talk to other women all the time. So if I share it to you and then you share it to your sister, then shares it to the other Alicia and then shares, she shares it to 10 of her friends and her, remember that the monkey bread, like you'd pass the bread and next thing you know, everyone's doing a bread or like all those things that yeah. just grow. It's so true. Okay. So I was just thinking about, we have this, the, the little, like uh, just a text chain group. We've got a couple of them, but sometimes one of us will share something there. And then that person, like you said, will share it out somewhere else and share it out to somewhere else. Oh my gosh. Which reminds and me I of share it to my coaching clients and then you may share yeah. it to your coaching clients and then they may share it to their friend. I mean, this is how it works. This is the world. That's yes. Okay. So that makes a ton of sense. All right. So if something is organically valuable, then it's going to get shared. And that's how that wildfire effect starts to happen. Organically. And then when it's being watched, if it is watched over time, the cool thing about YouTube, this is the biggest thing you need to hear loud and clear. It doesn't go away. It is yes. searchable. It's a library. You can look for it 10 years from now. You can find content from 1990, whenever it first started, like it does not go away and it's, so it's evergreen yes and it's cumulative yeah so that and that's the other piece that's why consistency is so important in this is and you can't just do the one and done thing or be sporadic about your content because as we know youtube will serve back up to us what we have already engaged Absolutely. with right to, what fits and they okay. link you so if you say my if, you, if i say if it knows that all i'm trying to gear towards is women childbearing years or that woman businesswoman and they start to see that my stuff's being watched by businesswomen, it's going to suggest my video when they watch another video about women in business. Right. Okay. That's the is algorithm there, working. Is there anything you have to do in terms of like tagging, putting yes. like how do you do that? Okay. There's keywords. That's why vidIQ and TubeBuddy are so important because they help uh, okay. you keywords and they rank the keywords. All right. So when so you're you publishing do, that video, you have to put the right mix of keywords in there. And, and the, there title, was the title is SEO rich. The description is okay. SEO rich. Everything is SEO rich. Okay. And there was something we learned at the success, the temporary success summit that we just came back from, which was midtail keywords. What yes. do you know about that? So midtail keywords are ones that are not like, it's exactly like an in Instagram. Like if you put in the, um, let's say if you put in success, mm -hmm. they'll be like, like a hundred billion people. That's mm -hmm. like, but then you could do successful realtor. That'll mm -hmm. go down. Mm -hmm. It's still searched. It's just not, because the thing is, if you're trying to do success, you're going to be caught up in all the noise. Right. Okay. But if you do success for realtor, it's still a really strong keyword, right. but it's, more, it's mid. Makes sense. Okay. And then long would be successful real estate agent in Richmond, Virginia or something like that. That would be really long. Yeah. Specific yeah. or like in, Glen Allen, Virginia, which is a suburb of Richmond. Do you use those long tail ones too when you're? Um, I actually don't make my own. I just do whatever the thing says to do. And <laughs> it gives me a percentage. Right. I try to look for anything over 65%. Okay. So I think what I'm hearing you say is for people who are trying to figure this out on their own, use a tool that's going to make it more efficient and effective for you. Yeah. We don't got time for that crap. Okay. All right. So we are at time on this, but I want to just really quickly do a review if we can in a linear fashion of the steps. So step one is, would you say define your audience as step one? Define your audience and who, like who, who are they? Okay. Not just define, don't just say like salespeople or real right. estate. Is it women? Is it men? Is it women and men? Are they 25 to 40? Are they 50 to 60? Are they married? Not married? Like what is, what income bracket, like narrow it okay. as much as possible. So narrow your audience. Two is create content ideas with a filter that that audience will mm -hmm. resonate with mm -hmm. those content ideas. Okay. And then you need to organize your like storyboard, mm -hmm. your episodes for each content idea. Correct. And then you edit, you figure out a way to edit either yourself or you hire somebody to edit, adding graphics, adding sound effects. If you want it, or just put it up. Like okay. there's plenty of, the biggest thing is make sure your sound is good. 
Like lighting is important, which is easy to get now. Back in the day, it was so hard for people to get like the correct lighting. Now it's everywhere. There's no excuse. Make right. sure your sound is good. Like if they can't hear you, we're going to have a problem. Or All maybe, right. And, so you know, sub, like and then we're, I know we're over time here, but I do think we should talk about this for a second. Does that mean a professional mic? Does that mean just a good computer that well, has if, sound? You, if you buy a computer, if you're using your iPhone or your camera, most cameras have great cameras and you don't have to buy a camera unless you want get a tripod so it's not right. moving all around it's not right. a big deal right. and get a little external mic or just make sure you're in a quiet room like what do you you know? for your sound do you have a mic so you- i just use my camera which is downstairs but it has the little road mic with the little furry thing on top oh uh, yes 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 okay and okay. that's only i only put that on if i'm outside because it's just for wind it's not if you're at home you don't need to put that thing on Okay. So when you're in your space where you film, it's, you don't use that. You're just using your camera. Okay. And perfect. Tripod and I try to like change little angles and once in a while I'll go to my office. It just, yeah. it, for me, it's like, I find that I do better. This is the channel. The channel isn't this piece, this space. It's not like come out with me and hang out with me. Maybe that'll change over time, but right now this is where I'm at. Okay. And you yes. need enough videos too. Cause like, think about it. Like, let's just say you hypothetically find the best person to follow you. And they're like, I love her. I want to watch more videos. And you have one video. Right. Right. Do you think it's necessary to be consistent about your, like the thumbnail showing where you are? Like you just said, you're in a specific space when you're filming. So people recognize mm-hmm. you could pop around, be outside, be in a different space. Okay. Whatever, uh-huh. whatever it is you're trying to con- convey, like, you know, okay. what is it you're doing? Okay. So you've created content. Then you need to put the content up using a tool like vidIQ that is going to make sure that you're using the right keywords and I don't, that like all that stuff. It's going to rate and rank so that you've got good viewership. All right. So now it's up. It's live. You're testing to make sure that the thumbnail is working. If it isn't, after a week or so, you're going to try to switch up the thumbnail to be more engaging. Um, And the hook we also talked about. And then you are inviting people from your other social media platforms, your friends. You're going to text them and all of that, putting the video out there, asking them to watch it to help your number of views and subscribers start to rise. get feedback. Because like if you're, okay. if you, and I watch my own videos, like watch your video. If it's not interesting to you, it's probably not interesting to other people. Okay. So what if that happens? What if you put it up and it really isn't? Do you scrap that video? Do you re-edit it and put something else up? No? You just, just keep on another video. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's the next big piece is that's kind of the last step is make another video. Don't stop. Keep creating okay, content. Okay. Content perfectionism. Just like keep going. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Great stuff. So I think we have all of the steps for you to get started and get discovered on YouTube. And, and subscribe you, and like mine, please. I was just going to say, your, um, you. if you guys will like tell people where it is, it's in YouTube, just put Alicia Sawikawa and it's the one that says thriving in real estate and life. I have a few different random channels that I just never got rid of. I don't know why, but it's the one that shows on top. All right. So follow Alicia, watch what she is creating, subscribe to her channel and keep watching what she's doing and get out there, do your own, get from, be out from do behind. It. Like, have fun with it. Yeah. All right. Well, enjoy out there in YouTube land. I'm going to follow you. And if you want to have us follow you, please follow us, message us, send us a DM. And we're, we are happy to support your efforts in getting discovered on YouTube. Hopefully this was helpful. This was certainly helpful to me. I learned a ton. Thank you, Alicia. This has been, so you want to be a real estate agent. We'll see you next time. We are so grateful you have joined us today. If you found value in today's episode, please subscribe to our show or share it with people that you think would benefit. And please remember to leave us a review or rating on the platform on which you are listening. And if you've got questions about Tom Perry coaching, have the both of us here, please contact us directly. We would love to answer your questions. Or if you're just curious, love to have a conversation reach us at any of our social media outlets or shoot us a direct message.